Hello. I often work on this sort of thing. It's an old uh, Philips and Grundig type format. This one's a Grundig SVR uh, 4004. And I also work on N1502 and N1700 machines that take the same kind of tapes. But a failing of these kind of machines is they don't have a standard, a video output circuit built in. They only have a modulator for connecting to an aerial. Uh, that's not ideal at all if you want to digitize the tapes. Now there is a circuit diagram circuit uh, designed by Stefan Heimers, uh, which can provide either composite video or can be configured for S video. But uh, building up the circuit on strip board like this is time consuming. It'd be way better if there was some sort of a PCB that you could use instead to build Special the components. Delivery. Ooh, look what I've got from uh, PCB way. This could be just what we're looking for. Of course, I need some components to populate and that. It looks like these parts came from eBay. Excellent. Right. Let's see if we can build some uh, video output circuits for these early video recorders. You might have seen on some of my previous videos, I have used this kind of board to build up the uh, circuit, which consists of two transistors and a handful of passive components uh, to provide the video output uh, buffer uh, on the N1502, N1700 and uh, SVC uh, or SVR4004 type machines. But, you know, you have to drill out this and solder it all together and it just takes a long time to build it that way. So, uh, I've worked with, well, Stefan Heim has provided the original circuit. He's aware of what we're doing. And one of my uh, viewers, Wacker, we're going to call him, uh, has designed a PCB because I'm rubbish at PCB design. Let's see what we have. Uh, I made one, a few small changes to the original design by Stefan. Uh, which I think are helpful. So we've got 20 of these boards. Uh, I do hope they work. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 10 of these and 10 more I can sell to people who might want them. Um, and I'll work out a price and I'll put that on screen. Uh, but I won't sell too many to any one person, just uh, maybe one or two per person. Right, so these are sort of vacuum packed from PCB Way. They're uh, quite seriously packaged. Oh. Lovely, look at that. Ah, it's got the logo on it. Oh, and I even get a mention. There we go. Uh, Wacker did the PCB design, Stefan Heimer's the original uh, circuit design. And we've got this lower part here can be for composite video or the luminance of S video. And if you do the S video, then you need this top part to do the chroma. That's just passive. And the way we've got the board actually designed is a v-groove here and if you need to just use the lower part you can snap off the top part uh, uh, I'm not going to do that right now so one nice thing here is that all the components are marked out carefully so you can just populate it you don't need to look at any diagrams to to build this though the voltage ratings here are it says 16 volt for the components but if we're going to fit this to an SVR 4004 machine, we're not going to be running it at 12 volts. We might be running it more like 15 volts. So it's worth using slightly higher voltage rated uh, capacitors for the SVR 4004 model. Also, the SVR 4004 is a little bit space constrained. So we may have to um, uh, think about how to make it slightly smaller. Uh, but for the 1502 and 1700, 1702 machines, there's plenty of space in the bottom to build this. Uh, so let's populate one of these and uh, see where we are. I've got most of the components we need here. Anything I don't have here, I already have in stock. So uh, 1,000 microfarad capacitors, uh, but the board says 16 volt. I've selected 25 volt. Uh, a little bit bulkier, but uh, gives us a bit more headroom. Okay, I think I'll start by populating some of the smaller components than that. Transistors. The transistors I've used in the past have been slightly non-ideal. These are BC550C, uh, which are particularly uh, ideal because they are low noise. Uh, 47 and 100 nanofarad capacitors. The video gain uh, preset pot there, 4.7K or thereabouts. Uh, but the particular one that's um, been marked up here is not one I've selected because they were a tad expensive. So um, I've used a somewhat cheaper component, it's 5K, close enough. And I think it will still fit the board. Yes, it fits the board perfectly. Okay, uh, I'll get that populated and we'll uh, meet again in a moment when it's finished.
but I'm delighted the way that's come out. Uh, I still need to add uh, the coaxial cable for in and out and also the uh, supply and ground. I'm going to be using this in composite video mode on an SVR 4004 so I need to take off this uh, top section which is for chroma and I think it will just snap off. It depends how deep this v-groove is. Let's give it a go. Good. Let's uh, finish off making up the cables and then we can fit that to uh, SVR 4004 machine. We're ready to install it. We now have the board with some uh, wiring for the uh, power. I know it says 12 volts, but it'll be 15 volts. I almost tempted to put some diodes in there to drop it down a little bit, but uh, I, I think the, the design is good for 15 volts. Uh, we have coaxial. This is the 75 ohm coaxial, the same stuff as I used when I made up a dub cable recently. So that's the input and output. Uh, we have a connector for the output BNC, so that'll be onto there. And we also have a phono socket with some ordinary screen cable to connect up the audio. So we have everything we need now to fit audio and video outputs to the SVR 4004. I've mounted the board here for the moment. Uh, so looking at the modulator uh, and working out from the schematic, I think we have from this end audio two 15 volt lines, one of those may be always on and the other on only when the machine's on, which is one I'd select if that's the case. Then a minus 26 volts, we don't want to touch that. And then video, I think, and then ground, and that is ground, I've checked it, and then a tuning voltage. So let's start by having a look at those two 15 volt lines. So audio and 15, so we'll switch machine on and we'll look at these two 15 volt lines. So that's 15 volts and the machine's on, it's still 15 volts. And the second one is 15 volt is off until the machine's on, I think. Yes. So it's that second 15 volt line we want to pick up and then the audio and video. Okay, we can solder that together. So here's the board that plugs onto the top of the modulator. Let's work through the pins. Pin one is audio, so I've got the audio signal out here, which is going to go to a phono connector. And the ground side of that is here, uh, which is a trace that goes round, right round to the ground uh, on this part. So that's audio dealt with. This was always 15 volts, don't want that one. This is 15 volts on, so that's going out to uh, power our board. Uh, this is a negative voltage, we don't want that. Uh, then this is the uh, video signal and ground for that. And the last signal there was a tuning voltage. So I can refit that to the modulator with our circuit board mounted there. That's not going anywhere. All I need to do now is connect up these two wires. This is the audio screened cable and this is the video 75 ohm cable to some sockets which I have to mount somewhere like here. Uh, if I've given myself enough cable length, uh, somewhere like here to uh, get the uh, connectors out of the cabinet. Okay, I've mounted the sockets on this panel at the back. It's already pre-drilled, which makes life a bit easier. So we have the BNC video connector there and a phono audio connector there. The drilling was too big for the phono connector, so I had to use a washer each side to uh, secure that in place. Uh, and the BNC connector fitted nicely. So now I'll test that in that position before I worry about the bottom cabinet. The cabinet has blanks that we'll have to take out in order to clear these sockets. It does make fitting the bottom a little bit harder. You have to sort of wiggle this on over the sockets, but that's just the way it is. Right, so we'll test it and get the uh, gain level set roughly right before we uh, put the bottom on. Okay, I've connected that up. Uh, let's see if we get uh, anything resembling a video signal. Uh, and I'll have to set the gain on here. So switch on, press play. And certainly have something. Looks pretty good. I don't appear to have sound and I don't appear to have color. Oh, simple process for now we have sound. Integrals. Interesting. I don't know what the sound and the colour have now arrived. Uh, capacitor trouble, probably. Right, set the tracking a little bit. Right, I could fine set the gain level 
with, if I can find a color bar picture or something like that. But basically, yep, that's working. Let's knock out those blanks at the bottom and put the bottom back on the machine. Looking at these blanks, you know, they're kind of marked at the front, but on the inside, there's nothing at all. So uh, they're not gonna be so much pushed out. They're gonna have to be drilled out, these. Okay, uh, it's made it slightly fiddlier to get the bottom on, as I predicted, but uh, it's on. So we'll do up those of these plastic screws that still do up and our machine is pretty much ready to go. So we can connect our audio and video connectors. Well, I'm very pleased with the way these PCBs have come out and these would be good for any of these sort of series machines that have the same kind of modulator that doesn't take quite a normal uh, full level video input signal. So uh, the original design is such that you can build you could have actually two of these in a machine such as the 1700. You could have one acting as S video, so you'd use both parts, and one as composite video only using just the lower part. Uh, I have tried the S video circuit. I tried it many, many years ago, and I preferred actually the composite video feeding out to a digital time base corrector that includes a digital comb filter. And I thought the picture looked more natural that way. Right, but anyhow, this machine is now um, pretty much done. It could perhaps use a, little, little, use a little fine fettling, but I don't think we can complain that that is definitely a working SVR 4004. Right, email me if you'd like uh, one or two of these bare PCBs. I will just sell a few of them to recoup some of the costs. I hope you've enjoyed what we've done today. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. Later, I will be releasing the Gerber files for this, uh, perhaps with a few small tweaks to it to make it a little bit easier to install.